Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, another short video, I'm trying to get as many short videos done as I can because it gives me a break from editing up the long ones like the UHF review. Anyway, um, what have I got today? Well, on the weekend my Mini Quad had a bit of an accident and, and look at the antenna here, it's kind of second hand. Even though I had it heat shrunk to a cable tie, um, somehow it got entangled with the prop and the end got chopped off and it's not uncommon. Not uncommon for people flying Mini Quads to end up with, or any kind of aircraft actually, to end up with the occasional antenna that's been completely destroyed or munted at the end like that. So what are you going to do if you get your antenna damaged like that? Uh, obviously you can't keep flying like this because it's going to significantly reduce your range. Even if you've got a spare antenna over here, if this is the one that uh, the telemetry signal is broadcast out of, then your telemetry is not going to work either in the case of a free sky receiver. So uh, what I'm going to show you today is how you can fix this up and get back into flying form. Right, we're going to need some simple tools to do this job. We'll need some side cutters probably need a knife. We will need a ruler and if you're not making notes you'll need a calculator because I'm going to, first of all, this this cable that we're looking at here is not just a piece of wire, it's actually a coaxial cable. That means it has a, a metallic mesh around the outside and then another wire through the middle which is insulated from the mesh. Um, this coaxial cable is just like the cable you use on your television antenna that sort of stuff. So it's essential that we actually do the job properly or it's just not going to work. The first thing we need to do is to get a nice neat end on there. So we take our side cutters and we just snip it off along where roughly where it's about you know stopped being completely beaten up. So snip that off, there we go, have a nice clean end to it. Okay now what we need to do is pair back the insulation and the metal screen underneath to a certain length and that length is important. These are what we call a quarter wave antenna. And what does that mean? Well it's one quarter the wavelength of the frequency we're using. Let's have a little bit of math here. Simple formula to work that out. You enter 300,000 like that, and you divide it by your frequency in gigahertz. I interrupt this video to bring you an important message. Obviously I was sleeping when I made this video because the correct formula for working out the length in millimeters for a frequency in gigahertz is 300 divided by the frequency in gigahertz. Uh, so please don't worry about the decimal point, just follow this simple formula and you will get the correct numbers for a wavelength at any frequency measured in gigahertz. We now return you to your original program. Now let's see, um, what's our frequency? We'll say because it's a 2.4 gig band it's from about 2.4 to 2.40 to 2.48. So we'll go 2.44, so 2.44. That's going to be the middle of the band and we do enter, or well, what do we do? Equals isn't it on these calculators? Not using my reverse Polish notation calculator now. That's a full wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz, but we want a quarter wavelength so we'll just divide that by 4 and we get a number that's 30.73, near enough to 31. That's the length of the exposed wire in millimetres. It's simple. It works for any frequency. You can use this simple formula and it'll give you the wavelength and then divide it by 4 to get the quarter wavelength. So it means we've got to measure 31 millimetres, roughly, from the end of that cable to where we're going to pair away our insulation. So we just need to mark that. That's where your knife comes in handy. Um, we'll just put that on here and I'll just make a little mark knife. It's hard to do with the camera because I'm busy trying to get this accurate so that it gives me best results. And I'll just put a little nick in there and there. So now I know roughly, roughly I have marked that in the right place. So what I have to do now is I have to pull off the insulation. I'll actually just ring bark that with my knife when you're not looking and then I'll pull the insulation off. Right now as I say the insulation is very thin on these so I've actually just cut a ring bark around it and I can just pull that off. So there you go, now you can see the mesh that is around the inner wire. And you can see this mesh, actually one thing you can do is you can push on it and it should bunch up like this if I can get it to do it, there we go. You see this mesh is actually bunching up and it's exposing the actual inner wire there, the plastic coated inner wire. So what I need to do is to now cut this mesh where the insulation has actually ended and that's a bit of a job, you can do it with your knife. If you've got really sharp side cutters you can use those, mine are actually buggered because my good side cutters, uh, I've lost them somewhere so those ones are pretty bad. So I'm just going to get my knife in here and just cut away that mesh, trying, it doesn't have to be totally neat at this stage because we're going to tidy it up but we need to remove the mesh so I'll just cut that away and then I shall tidy it up when I find my good side cutters. Just make sure you don't damage the inner wire of course. And it's, I hope my head's not in shot because this is actually really 
the worst things to make is videos where you're doing close-up stuff because you can't look at the camera while you're looking at the work. Right, so I've just cut away with my knife. I've cut away around here, not very neatly as you can see, but I've just cut through the knife so I can now effectively, hopefully, pull. There we go, I've pulled the screen off. There's the screen, that's that braided screen that's around the outside. And that has left the inner wire exposed, as you can see. Now, there's a bit, it's a bit untidy down here, so I'm gonna just tidy this up with my side cutters, but I find my good side cutters. And you need to make sure you haven't damaged that wire. The wire's all good. This one's all fine, it's not kinked or the insulation isn't damaged. So now I can just tidy up the base there. And we've got our aerial. Of course, check the length, make sure that in the process of cutting and measuring, you haven't got the wrong length. So I run with, yes, that is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So there we go. Um, once you've done that, if I can get this back into shot, once you've done that, of course, then you're, uh, you, you're pretty much done. Um, and you've fixed your antenna. So there you go, job done. Uh, one thing to remember, if you're cutting little bits of wire off here, don't let them in fall into any of your gear like on this quad I've got a naze board under here to be very careful that little fragments of wire don't land on the naze board because of course when you put the power on smoke will come out so there you go that's neat enough for me 31 millimeters long right so there we are there it is all done relatively nicely um, and one thing you notice it's not as long as because I've actually used up some more of the cable here doesn't quite make it all the way to the end of my cable tie. I'm not worried about that. That's going to be fine. This is a mini quad. We don't fly long distances with a mini quad. We're flying relatively close. This is going to give me more than adequate operation. Uh, but when you do have a situation where you, you perhaps this wire is cut very close to the receiver, um, you can actually change the entire aerial lead. If you look closely on most of these receivers, there are things we call micro FL connectors in here, UFL, and they're a little connector that pushes onto the circuit board. So you can actually take the whole antenna off put a new one on. Now there's a few traps for young players if you're going to be doing that. So I'll do a separate video about that, actually replacing the antenna rather than just reconditioning it. So if you uh, have questions, comments, anything on this video, then please put them in the space provided by YouTube. If you've got ideas for other videos, then uh, do the same thing. Stick, you know, just ask. I'll see what I can do for you. And as I say, quick video gives me a break from editing. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for me to get back to the bench.